My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in New York. Now, several people who um, are kind enough to watch this channel have written to me and said, Dr. Gupta, could you please talk about natokinase? And the reason I did not comply with this request uh, was simply because I did not know anything about natokinase. Uh, you see, in medical school, I did not receive any education at all on nutrition, uh, which seems crazy now. Uh, however, after spending the best part of my life practicing medicine, I have realized how limited our medicines are at preventing heart disease. And then my interest in nutritional and natural remedies has been ignited. I've now done some reading around natokinase and feel able to share some of my insight with all of you. Right. So before we talk about natokinase, we need to know about natto because natokinase is found in natto. Natto is a cheese-like food which is made of soybeans which have been fermented with a bacterium called Bacillus subtilis, S-U-B-T-I-L-I-S. -I -I Natto has been consumed as a traditional food in Asian countries for several thousand years and Natto consumption is believed to be a significant contributor to the longevity of the Japanese. For a long time, it was not very clear to scientists as to why natto consumption was linked with good cardiovascular health. In 1987, there was a breakthrough when it was discovered that natto contained a potent enzyme called natto kinase, and perhaps it was the natto kinase in the natto that was responsible for the benefit seen. Incidentally, natto is also a very good source of vitamin K2, and I've recently done a video on the benefits of vitamin K2 on heart health, and it's worth, um, if you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out because I think it's quite an interesting video. Right, the dose of natto kinase is measured in FU, fibrinolytic units, okay? 50 grams of natto has about 1,500 FU of natto kinase in it. This will be useful later on as I go a little bit further into this. Now, there have been many experiments done to study the benefits of natto kinase, but most of these have been done in the lab, in test tubes, and in animal models. So the animal models are usually rats and mice. There have been very few studies done in human beings, and this is why one has to be very careful in assuming that all the benefits that have been purported in lab studies could also apply to humans. In any case, I will share what we know about natokinase so far. Now, natokinase is thought to have fibrinolytic and anticoagulant properties, which means that at least in the laboratory, in test tubes, it has been shown to prevent the formation and improve the breakdown of blood clots. As you know, heart attacks, strokes, and pulmonary emboli are all caused by formation of blood clots within blood vessels, and the blood clot would then stop blood from getting through, and this leads to suffocation and death of cells. This is why we rely on medications such as aspirin or even anticoagulants like warfarin to stop or treat blood clot formation. However, these medications carry the increased risk of bleeding, side effects, and therefore they're only used in high-risk patients. The idea of a natural anticoagulant, therefore, is very attractive. And there have been several experiments using natokinase in rats, and a scientist called Fujita studied the effects of natokinase on chemically induced thrombosis in the common carotid artery of rats. And he found that natokinase was four times more effective than plasmin at dissolving the clots. In addition, uh, natokinase at a dose of 2,836 FU dissolved 88% of the blood clots that had been induced within six hours. There have also been other studies looking at chemically induced pulmonary emboli, blood clots in the lungs, in rats, and natokinase has been found to reduce clot formation and improve survival in these rats. Hence, it not only reduces clot formation, i.e. it has antithrombotic properties, but it also dissolves clot, i.e. it has fibrinolytic properties, at least in rats. We can't be 100% sure about humans. I will, however, talk to you about some human studies that have been done. There are very few that I could find, and the ones that exist have enrolled only a very small number of patients, 
and looked at surrogate markers rather than hard outcomes such as death, heart attacks or strokes. There's a study by a researcher called SIA, HSIA, where they asked 45 subjects, and these subjects consist of healthy volunteers, patients with cardiovascular risk factors, and patients undergoing dialysis. And uh, they asked these patients to take two capsules of natokinase. Each capsule was 2,000 FU daily for two months. And they then measured the effect of taking the natokinase on clotting factors in the blood. And they found that the levels of fibrinogen, factor seven, factor eight, all decreased by seven to 19% in all three groups, suggesting that maybe by reducing these clotting factors, natokinase may have benefits in terms of reduction of clot formation. There was another study by Kurosawa et al, where they studied the effects of natokinase and compared it to placebo in 12 healthy volunteers. And they concluded that a single dose of natokinase seemed to enhance anticoagulation and fibrinolysis compared to placebo. Whilst this is all interesting, it's not enough, unfortunately, to recommend natokinase as an alternative to current therapies for the prevention of blood clots until we have data in a much larger cohort of patients. And we need really to study hard endpoints. You know, it's okay, yes, it reduces clotting factors. What we're not interested in is, if you think about it, we're not really interested in whether it reduces clotting factors. What we're interested in knowing is, does it prevent death? Does it prevent heart attacks? Does it prevent strokes? And unfortunately, we don't have those data yet. So until we have such data, we can't take natokinase with any level of confidence that this will do what it is supposed to do, or at least purports to do in a lab. Now, another benefit that has um, been talked about is natokinase may, ha may have a role as a blood pressure lowering agent. In lab studies, natokinase has been found to inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme ACE. This uh, is an enzyme that is responsible for increasing blood pressure. And that's why one of the types of medications we use for blood pressure are ACE inhibitors, right? So anything that inhibits ACE may have blood pressure lowering effects. Natokinase has been found to inhibit ACE. So does it lower the blood pressure? And in 2008, there was a study by Kim et al where they took 86 patients with prehypertension or stage one hypertension and found that natokinase reduced the systolic blood pressure, the top value by 5.5 millimeters of mercury, and the diastolic blood pressure by 2.8 millimeters of mercury. Similar results were also found in a study of 79 patients by Jensen et al. in 2016. These are better data, but again, it would be so much more comforting to see these results replicated in a much larger cohort of patients. You see, the problem is that when you do studies in small numbers, the benefits are greatly magnified and or the risks are magnified. And actually, when you do the same study involving thousands and thousands of patients, you'll find that the benefits aren't as great and the risks aren't as great. This is just the very nature of clinical studies. Um, and actually, incidentally, a more recent study, which I'll discuss a little later, published in 2021, actually suggested that when natokinase was used in a larger cohort of patients, 265 patients, it did not reduce blood pressure more than placebo. So again, a little bit confusing, but that's what the data are. Natokinase is also thought to have cholesterol lipid lowering properties. In animal studies, uh, they found that natokinase at high doses, 6,500 FU, if taken for 26 weeks, reduced total cholesterol, reduced LDL cholesterol, so that's bad cholesterol, LDL, reduced triglycerides, and increased HDL. HDL is generally considered as good cholesterol, so it reduced bad cholesterol and it increased good cholesterol. This was taking it for 26 weeks uh, at a dose of 6,500 FU. 
Subsequently, another study was done which looked at slightly lower doses, uh, doses of 4,000 FU over eight weeks, and this did not show similarly significant results. So maybe that could be because they didn't study it for long enough. This was eight weeks compared to the previous study, which was 26 weeks. Uh, this was a lower dose as well, 4,000 FU compared to 6,500 FU. So it's not quite clear cut. And again, we need more studies. We need studies in a larger number of patients. Uh, another uh, thing that natokinase has been uh, thought to, uh, a property it has been thought to um, uh, possess is neuroprotective properties. So in the lab, it has been shown to degrade amyloid fibrils, and therefore there has been some suggestion that it may be beneficial in amyloid-related conditions such as Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there have been small studies in rat and mice with chemically induced dementia, which have shown that natokinase could have benefits. But again, there are no studies that have been done in a large enough cohort of humans to support its use for prevention or treatment of dementia. Now, given its potential benefits in lowering of blood pressure and reducing cholesterol levels, scientists have become interested in knowing whether natokinase supplementation could prevent or delay or even reverse atherosclerosis, the hardening of arteries that leads to coronary artery disease. And in 2017, Wren, a scientist called Wren, assigned 82 patients to receive either 6,000 FU of natokinase or 20 milligrams of simvastatin daily for 26 weeks. And uh, his team measured carotid artery intimal thickness and carotid artery plaque size. And they found that natokinase, the natokinase arm had a 36.6% reduction in carotid artery plaque size compared to only 11.5% in the statin arm. So they said, oh, natokinase is better than statins. Uh, this um, was only a small study and therefore it obviously needed a slightly larger study. The, a subsequent study was done uh, and it was published in 2021. It looked at 265 patients who were randomized to natokinase 2000 FU, so lower dose versus placebo. And they concluded that after three years, there was no significant difference in terms of subclinical atherosclerosis prevention or even blood pressure. So overall, whilst natokinase does seem to have some beneficial properties in the test tube or, and also in animal models, uh, we really do not have high quality data in humans to be confident of its benefits in human beings. Clearly more work is needed, clearly more research is warranted. The problem is, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be much research on this because most of the research is driven by pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical countries are not going to be interested in something that doesn't make them money. So there will continue to remain a gap in our knowledge. And my worry is that obviously, you know, there are a lot of people out there who understandably don't have confidence in pharmaceutical agents. They want natural alternatives. When they read about all the benefits of natokinase, they may be tempted to try out natokinase as an alternative to what is recommended. And unfortunately, no one can really feel confident that the reason they're taking it will, um, will um, be, you know, they'll benefit from it because of this lack of data. So if for no other reason, I would call upon people to do more research looking at this and answering conclusively the question, is it beneficial? And if it is, then, you know, it sounds like a, a wonderful thing to do. Um, of course, you know, the problem also is different studies look at different um, endpoints, different studies use different dosages, and it would be quite nice to get some kind of conclusive um, data, you know, from a big study which has been designed properly, which has recruited lots of patients, which are, which is studying it at different dosages, etc. And that would be really helpful. So as far as in terms of longevity and uh, prevention of or reduction of risk, I can't tell you what natokinase does. I can tell you that it has promising properties, but I can't tell you what it does. What I would be quite interested, however, in knowing is whether 
taking natokinase improves quality of life because when it comes to quality of life you may not necessarily need to wait for these large big studies you know quality of life is a very subjective thing so uh, anecdotal data are also helpful here and so if you take natokinase as a supplement i would be really interested for my own education uh, to know what benefits you have found with it uh, has it uh, made improved your quality of life in some way? Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. As always, I've been terrible with posting videos. I've just been so busy. Uh, the NHS is in a state of absolute meltdown at the moment. So, um, you know, all our energies are consumed in trying to keep it afloat. Uh, but I will keep trying. I hope you found this useful. All the best. And once again, thank you for all that you do for me.